Hey, what you reading for? If 2024 is half as good a year in terms of reading as 2023 was, it's going to be a good year. And as good as 2023 was, I have a sneaky suspicion that 2024 is going to be even better. My favorite horror writer working today, Adam Neville, is coming out with a new book. So that has me very excited. And it's kicking off uh, 2024 on a positive note. It's slated for an April release, but I have been extremely uh, privileged to get an advanced copy of the book. Obviously, I'm not going to wait until 2024. I've started it already. And yes, 2024 is going to be a good year for horror. And my TBR is uh, relatively cleared, uh, or at least down to a manageable, manageable, reasonable level. So I will be able to be more impulsive and capricious in my reading selection, which should be fun. That was not the case for 2023. I started 2023 off with an obscene amount of books on my TBR. So that had me really stressed out. And so I spent the uh, better part of 2023 going through my TBR. So I didn't, you know, I did more backlog reading, essentially, and I didn't uh, get to read many new releases. I expect in 2024 to strike a better balance between those two. I started this uh, booktube channel uh, this year in June 2023. And I am over the moon at the amount of positive vibes and love and encouragement and positive feedback I've been getting from you guys and all the great book recommendations. I'm meeting a lot of cool people, discovering a lot of great authors. And I look forward to continuing that journey of reading and discovering with you into 2024. If you are new to this channel, fantastic. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. The more the merrier, that's what I say. Out of the 84 books I read in 2023, this is my top 20 reads of the year. Um, six literary, eight horror, and six other. I'm going to go through this list fast. Because um, most of the books on this list I've talked about in another video or other videos. So what I'll do is I'll just say something uh, brief and short about the book. And I'll mention um, where I talked about it before and what other video I talked about it more in depth. In the interest of speed, no intro sequence. Let's jump right into it. At number 20, The Bad Seed by William March the original Killer Kid book. Now, I read a lot of Killer Kid books, a concerning amount of Killer Kid books, now that I think about it. And uh, some are good, some are not so good. But in my opinion, none has yet to match uh, the strength and charm of the original. At number 19, White Oaks by, White Oaks by Jordan King. A tight, tense book with likable characters. Think uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest meets Coma. Now, I got to interview Jordan King about White Oaks uh, in one of the first uh, videos I put up for this channel in the, the series of Authors Talking Shop. At number 18, we have Fever Dream by George R. R. Martin. Vampires steamboat racing on the Mississippi in the 19th century. Now, I am generally not really much of a fan of vampires, but thanks to this book, I am a fan of steamboats. Featured in my video, uh, 80s retrospective, 1982, The Year in Horror. At number 17, Dearest by Peter Lohran. A taxi driver does horrible things to his wife 
and gruesome things to her corpse. And it is hilarious. He narrates this story in an effort to justify to himself and to us these horrible acts. And it's easy for him to justify them because in his reductionist, uh, cut and dried uh, world of absolutes, he has got it all figured out. And as much as I, I wouldn't want to spend any time with this guy or be anywhere near him, I did have a blast uh, following his narration. Um, yeah, it was quite a unique book. Uh, and I featured, uh, I talk about this book in depth in my video, The Strangest Books I've Ever Read. And it's also in um, the 80s retrospective, 1984, The Year in Horror. At number 16, The Sentinel by Jeffrey Convins. This starts off as a creepy horror set in a Manhattan apartment, reminiscent of Rosemary's Baby. And then it turns and becomes a, a page-turning mystery, and only to culminate in a final act, which is bonkers over the top, yet satisfying horror again. And I talk about this in depth in my 70s retro retrospective, The Best Horror of the 1970s, Volume 2. At number 15 is Spider by Patrick McGrath. This is the first person narration of a schizophrenic who is released from a uh, hospital for the criminally insane. So he returns to his old stomping grounds to try to piece together his memory and come to terms with who he is and what he has done. Now, I read this book because I had seen the David Cronenberg movie adaptation of it, and I really liked it. And while the movie and the book are beat for beat the same, essentially, uh, the book gave me a more intimate and I think more compelling and engaging experience. And I go into depth uh, about it in the video, the most disturbing books I've ever read. Coming in at number 14, I can't believe this book is so low in my ranking, but I've read a lot of great books in 2023. And this book is called Ancient Lights by Davis Grubb. Too bizarre for me to get into what it's about here. Uh, think uh, Salman Rushdie meets the Looney Tunes and they go to a sex club to discuss spirituality. It's a weird one and it's a beautiful one as well. I uh, talk about it in depth in the video, The Strangest Books I've Ever Read. Coming in at number 13 is Disturb Not the Dream by Paula Trachtman. Think uh, V.C. Andrews on crack. On more crack than she was normally on. Uh, trigger warnings for everything. Not the kind of book I would typically get excited about, but the writing and the pacing were exceptional. A behavioral psychologist has an affair with his au pair. Uh, stuff happens and everyone gets slaughtered. Uh, featured in my video 1981, The Year in Horror. Coming in at number 12, Sundial by Catriona Ward. Catriona Ward has put out five novels, and I've loved them all. So where does Sundial fit in my ranking of her novels? Well, it fits quite high. How high? Uh, check out the video uh, ranking all the Catriona Ward novels. It ranks high in that list. Coming in at number 11, Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Suzanne. Uh, a, three young women moved to New York City with the ambition of finding men who will buy them furs. And they also sing and dance. Cheap, uh, gossipy tabloid fodder. And I loved it. And I do not feel guilty about it either. I talk about this in depth in my videos, uh, 15 recommendations, booktube tag, and uh, August reading wrap up. 
So cracking the top 10 is First Blood by David Morrell. Now this book uh, spawned the hit movie franchise Rambo, but the book uh, has very little to do with that nonsense. Instead, what we get is a tight, well-paced action slash survival story with nuanced and um, well-fleshed out characters. I was so impressed and surprised by this book that I gave it its own video. At number nine is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. Uh, King Henry VIII wants to get a divorce, but the Pope is being a meanie about it. So the king, he asks one of his uh, counselors to uh, sort things out for him. How is this an 800 page novel? It is, and it's excellent. Uh, it's gripping and um, an immersive experience. Uh, well deserved of all the accolades it has received, such as the, winning the Man Booker Prize. Coming in at number eight, is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. What is a science fiction book doing on my list? I don't read science fiction, but I did read this book and I really, really liked it. This book has one of my favorite lines uh, of 2023, maybe one of my favorite lines in all of literature, and that is a uh, so long and thanks for all the fish. Chapeau, Mr. Adams. Coming in at number seven is The House of Small Shadows by Adam Neville. Now, I love a focused book. And most, almost the entirety of this book, it takes place in one setting, which is this creepy house filled with uh, gruesome dioramas of taxidermied rats and uncanny porcelain dolls. Not your typical haunted house book, but a house with a presence, a house with, with an objective and the cunning required to meet its unspeakable end. I talk about this in depth in my video, Unique Haunted House Book Recommendations. Coming in at number six, White Teeth by Zadie Smith. A very impressive debut. This book has a lot of characters in it and she manages to give each one their own voice and their own unique and compelling uh, needs and desires. And she manages to juggle all these interweaving plot lines and never does one uh, overstay its welcome or never is one uh, neglected for too long. And she works them all together until they culminate into a satisfying, beautiful conclusion. It's very impressive. I need to read more from Zadie Smith and I'm going to do so definitely in 2024. At number five is No Exit by Taylor Adams, a thriller. I don't read a lot of thrillers. Um, I, gener I generally find them formulaic and they lack the inventiveness that I really look for. But No Exit, the, the execution is flawless in this book. It really is. There is not a single page in this book that is not filled with tension. And the characters were well fleshed out and believable. Five stars. Uh, featured in the video September Book Awards, as well as Cold Winter Reads. Coming in at number four, The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. Now this book uh, has one of my favorite similes of 2023. Arundhati Roy, or through one of her characters, she talks about the uh, arranged marriages in India and uh, how uh, on the wedding night, the bride um, gets decorated and or get, dons these uh, elaborate, colorful costumes and wearing lots of jewelry and has the face painted up. 
So in the God of Small Things, one of the characters uh, qualifies this custom as being akin to polishing firewood. If you have uh, read any other book uh, by Arundhati Roy, I would love to hear about your experience uh, with them. Uh, I think this is an author that I need to explore further. And I talk about this book also in the video September Book Awards. At number three, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, a book about friendship about love, about sacrifice, about heroism and cowardice. This book has it all, and it's gorgeously written. A five-star read for me that I talk about in several videos, uh, notably um, the video titled, I Respond to One-Star Reviews of Books I Love. At number two, The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. A book that extols the virtues of communism and orange picking. And it has a weird ending. I love it when it gets weird. Thank you, Mr. Steinbeck. Or should I say, Spasiba, Tavarish. Eta yes, nash pos lerni, irashitelni boy. Sinternacional. Any, excuse me. Anyway, it's a great book. Uh, it turns out John, St John Steinbeck is a great writer. Who knew? I need to uh, explore more uh, John Steinbeck going forward, I think. I've only read Of Mice and Men, or in The Red Pony, but that was decades ago. Uh, the, those books and his others need a revisit. Which means that coming in or claiming the top spot on my top 20 reads of 2023 is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. A labyrinth of a book about a labyrinth of a house and about so much more. This book is uh, gorgeously layered. It's uh, funny, it's uh, poetic, and at times legitimately scary. A masterpiece that I talk about in my video, 10 best horror novels of all time. One of the first videos I put up on this channel. Do you have any experience with the books or the authors on this list? I would, I always love uh, reading your comments. In fact, your comments, I think, were the, the best reads for me for 2023. True story. Uh, or House of Leaves. It, it's close. Thank you very much for following me on this reading journey that was 2023 with its ups and downs and its sharp turns into the dark and the strange and the beautiful. Let's make 2024 even better, yeah? Thank you for watching. Thank you for following and supporting me. And I will see you a bit further along on this journey.